Hey, what's going on people? I hope you guys are doing good. So today we're gonna go over several tips and tricks for the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max that you can use in your everyday life versus camera tips and tricks only. So let's go ahead and dive into this. If you guys have ever logged into like your bank account or say something like Uber on a new device, you'll receive verification codes in order to verify your identity so you can log in on that new device. On iOS 17 and the iPhone 15 series, you can go into your settings then go under password. So under passwords, then you're gonna tap on password options. And then if you toggle on cleanup automatically, it's going to automatically delete those verification codes from your messages and your emails as soon as you autofill them. That way you don't have to go back into whether it's your email or your messages and delete them manually. I really find that useful. So with the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max and iOS 17, you're able to turn your phone into an alarm clock thanks to a feature called standby. All you have to do is use a MagSafe dock, put your phone on it and rotate it sideways and boom. You do have to make sure standby is turned on and tweak the settings that you wanna see. Let me show you. So what you're gonna do is go into your main settings, scroll down until you see standby, tap on that, and then make sure standby is toggled on now you'll be able to turn your iPhone into basically an alarm clock. You can also toggle on always on display if you always want to see the information on your phone, no matter if you're near it or not. You can toggle on night mode, which will turn the font and everything being displayed on your phone into like a red color to make it easier on the eyes. And you can also toggle on motion to wake. So it's only going to display that information whenever it detects motion. And you have a few other things like notifications and show preview on tap only. So make sure you dive into the standby settings and tweak it to your liking. That way you can, you know, get the most out of this really cool feature, especially if you're on the go and you travel a lot because now you have a legit alarm clock. So stickers on an iPhone aren't necessarily new, but this year you're able to pull a subject from a photo and create a sticker from that subject and then paste it on another photo. So for example, I just took a picture of that ball. We're gonna turn that ball into a Christmas ornament and hang it from one of these trees. So there's the picture of the ball that I was talking about, but we also need to take a picture of the trees. So we'll go ahead and back up and go into the camera. We'll zoom in a little bit, snap a picture of the tree. We'll go to the tree, turn off live photo, and then we'll go over to the ball and go ahead and extract it like so. Tap on add sticker. From here, you can also add different effects to that sticker just by simply holding it down. So I can add an effect such as an outline, comic, puffy, or I can make it shiny. And since this is going to be a Christmas ornament, we'll go ahead and leave it as shiny. We'll tap done. Now we're gonna go ahead and go into the tree picture, which is right here. We're gonna tap on edit. Then we're gonna go under markup by tapping on the little pin in a circle. Tap on the plus symbol then add sticker. Now we'll tap on that ball. We can rotate it. We can make it bigger. So we'll go ahead and try to rotate it here. Just like that. And we'll hang it from the tree just like so. Once you're happy with it, tap done. And that is how you can add one photo on top of another photo thanks to the new stickers on the iPhone 15 and iOS 17. So when it comes to iPhones, battery degradation is a real problem and it's been a problem for a while. Luckily with the iPhone 15 series and iOS 17, there's a setting that you can enable to prolong the life of your battery. Let me show you. So if you want to prolong the life of your battery, what you're gonna... I just realized I'm trying to talk over bells. What you're gonna do is go into your main settings. You're gonna scroll down and then go under battery then tap on battery health and charging and then toggle on battery optimization and then hit up the 80% limit. The 80% limit is going to only charge your phone to 80%, but doing this is going to prolong the life of your battery, but it's going to come at the cost of less battery life. So remember, your phone may not last as long since it's only charging to 80%, but the life of your battery is going to be extended because of this. So if you keep your phone for an extended amount of time, whether it's two, three, four years, you might want to consider enabling this. But if you only keep your phone for like a year or two, then I would probably just leave on optimized battery charging. Staying on the topic of battery life, if you notice that your iPhone 15 doesn't have as good as battery life as your iPhone 14, there's one setting that you might wanna check out. It really helped me out, so let me show you. 
The setting that I'm referring to has to do with 5G. I noticed that leaving 5G on auto was just destroying my battery life. So what I did was go into cellular within the main settings. Then I tapped on cellular data options, then voice and data, and then I just toggled 5G on. Instead of having it automatically switch under 5G auto, this really, really helped me out. So maybe it'll help you out. I learned this from another creator, Matt Monez. So make sure to check out his channel. He has a lot of great stuff on there, but he told me recently just to turn that on and it's really made a difference. Safari is one of the best browsers on mobile because of how efficient it is on the iPhone. And they've updated it with the iPhone 15 and iOS 17 thanks to Safari profiles. You're able to separate your work life from your personal life and your school life. Let me show you how to set it up. If you wanna take advantage of Safari profiles, you're gonna go into the main settings, type in Safari, then go under the Safari settings, scroll all the way down, and then tap on new profile. From here, we can set up one for school since we're right by an education center, and we'll put in college, right? Then we'll pick the icon that we want, we'll pick the color that we want, and then we'll tap done. Now, if I tap on college, I can set up different extensions that will automatically be applied to that profile. I can delete the profile. I can select what tabs are gonna be open whenever I select that profile. I can also choose what favorites are going to be seen inside of that profile. So if I want my social sites to be seen, I can go ahead and do that. Or I can go ahead and dictate the college setting or the college bookmark folder, that way all of my stuff gets saved under the college favorite. Now if I want to use that profile, I'll go into Safari, tap on the tabs manager there, tap on the little person on the bottom, and then select profile, tap college, and then boom, now I'm inside of my college profile. Any tabs that I have open inside of this profile will only be seen inside of the college profile. And you could do this for multiple different things. So you don't have to have like a college profile or a work profile. You can have different things. Like if you're furniture shopping, you can have a furniture profile. If you're shopping for a birthday, you can have that person's birthday as a profile. Things like that. That way you keep everything separated and very well organized. One new feature on the iPhone 15 series and iOS 17 is downloadable maps. And this is extremely useful, especially if you're in an environment like this where you may not have service, but you need to get out of this creepy alleyway. Or if you're in New York, because every time I'm in New York, I can never find my way around the city because maps just doesn't work. However, if you download the map before you go, you have access to everything. So let me show you how you can download sections of a map and prepare for your next journey. To download a map, you're gonna go inside of Apple Maps, tap on your little profile logo, then you're going to tap on offline maps, then you're going to download new map. You can choose your current location or do a search. So for this, we'll do a search, we'll just type in Orlando. And then it's going to pull up the location on the map. From here, you can resize the grid that you wanna download. So we'll make it as big as possible and we'll go ahead and tap on download. And now it's going to download that map. Now right here, you can see I have downloaded maps. I have one for Claremont, one for New York, and then I'm currently downloading one for Orlando. You can also select only use offline maps if you wanna save yourself some data. And you have a couple more settings down here as well, like optimized storage, automatic updates, and things like that. Automatic updates is really useful since it will automatically update your downloaded map once you are on Wi-Fi or if you want to choose Wi-Fi and cellular. Really useful stuff right here. Thank goodness Apple finally added this because I know it's been on Google for a while. The next thing I want to talk about is how to customize the brand new action button, which is specific to the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. You can do a lot of stuff with this little thing. Let me show you. Let me give you an example of how I have my action button set up. If I press and hold, it pulls up a series of selections that I can choose from. I can quickly restart my phone. I can trigger my assistant, which is not the Google Assistant or Siri. Instead, if I tap on that, it pulls up ChatGPT and I can ask ChatGPT anything. I can also do a quick note. I can turn on a focus mode or I can put my phone on silent or turn my ringer back on. And I did all of this with a simple Siri shortcut. So if I go into settings and then go down until I see action button and tap on that, I can actually program it to do a specific Siri shortcut. Now, if you want the one that I'm using, I'll go ahead and link it down in the description. However, you do have to download the ChatGPT app and you also have to you know, fine tune it a little bit to your liking. 
But if you don't want to use a Siri shortcut, you can do magnifier, voice memo, flashlights, you can have it trigger the camera, a focus mode, or your silent mode. And if you go all the way to the end, you can have it do no action, or you can have it do an accessibility feature. And then finally, we have Siri shortcut. So you can really fine tune this to your liking. Just in case you're wondering, this is the Siri shortcut that I set up for my action button. It's right here. You can see I have the choose from menu prompt, and then I have all of these choices, and then this is the rest of it. But like I said, I will see if I can link this down in the description, so that way you can just download it and apply it to your phone. If you don't have an iPhone 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max, I'm pretty sure you can program it using the power button. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but I think you can. If not, you know, this is one of the reasons why the Pro and Pro Max is actually a pretty good option this year. I do like that action button. It's really grown on me. The next thing I wanna talk about is the Reminders update. So Reminders actually got quite a few new features and on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it's been awesome, especially with that extra screen real estate. So let me show you my favorite features with the new Reminders app. My favorite feature inside of the Reminders app is the ability to create a smart groceries list. So if I tap on add list and then tap on list type, select groceries, I'll go ahead and name this Publix, tap done. We'll go into the list and I'll just start adding items. So milk, diapers, toilet paper, paper towels, floor cleaner, oop, floor cleaner. And you can see it automatically categorized the items. So it put milk in dairy, eggs, and cheese. It put diapers under baby care and then my household items. Now from here, I can tap on the three little dots, select manage sections, and I can move these sections around or I can create a new one. But what's really cool is if I tap on the three little dots and do view as column, I can view everything as a column versus the layout that I was in before. So this is my favorite feature of the new Reminders app. And I gotta say, Apple has really done a good job fine tuning this app and it's completely free. And that's what I love about it. For this last feature, we had to go somewhere quiet, so we're gonna shoot it inside of the car, hopefully to minimize some noise, but basically, it allows you to use your voice as your own voice assistant, or voice for like navigation and things like that. It's really interesting. I haven't done it yet, so I'm gonna set it up kinda live on camera. We're gonna do some cuts, but this should be really interesting. If you wanna use this feature, you're gonna go into the settings, then you're gonna go down until you see accessibility, tap on that. Scroll down until you see personal voice, tap on that, and then create a personal voice. Go ahead and just tap continue, tap continue. Now basically it's gonna have you read off a bunch of different phrases and prompts and it's going to learn your voice patterns and your voice. So we'll go ahead and continue. Check sound quality. So right now the audio is going to be coming through my Tesla, which I really did not want. I disconnected the Bluetooth so that way we did not do that. So um, I guess uh, we're gonna go ahead and just try it. So I'm creating a personal voice with my iPhone. So it's not working because it's using the microphone inside of my Tesla. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to do this with all the doors shut and then come back once it's done. <laughs> Finding a parking spot in the city can be difficult. 150. I have to do this 150 times. In addition to the Great Lakes, Michigan has more than 11,000 smaller lakes. Oh my God. He has elected to, he, can, cancel. Oh. oh, thank God. Thank God. I don't know if I can talk anymore. I don't know if I could talk anymore. Ugh. I don't know how those audiobook people do it. Your personal voice will be created securely on your device since the process may need to complete complete overnight <laughs> so my personal voice finished this morning around 3 30 a.m so it definitely takes quite a bit of time i put my phone in airplane mode to speed up the process because every single time i received the notification the process would pause so it has to be plugged in and your device has to be locked and i highly recommend putting it in airplane mode in order to speed everything up so if you go into settings and then go under accessibility and then go under personal voice you can see my voice is right there. To test this out, I set up live speech to be triggered three times with the power button. So we'll go ahead and press it three times and we'll go ahead and load up a phrase. 
So this is a long one. We'll see how well it does. And we'll end the video after this. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know if there's anything you learned from all of these tips and tricks. Make sure to check out the previous where I covered camera tips and tricks. Yeah, that's really weird.